Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Liddy, I'm just curious. First of all, thank you for working for a dollar a year. Apparently, Diogenes found his one good man, and you're it. Uh, I think you're about to get some more of some more thanks. Um, just curious, when you were doing these bonuses, did you expect that it would touch a nerve with the American people as it has? Absolutely. All right. So you knew this was coming. Yes. All right. Perhaps not as not as severe as it is, but absolutely. Fair enough. Are there, I, I understand that these people that got these bonuses may be good. And I want to be clear. I'm not against bonuses per se. What I'm against is bonuses to people that helped cause the problem, and particularly bonuses that come out of taxpayers' dollars, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not against bonuses. We're not talking about anybody who got a thousand dollar bonus. We're talking about people who got hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. And I just do you believe, honestly, in your heart, with all of the unemployment that's gone on in the financial services sector right now, right this very minute, do you really believe that these are the only people that are capable of doing this job? No, I don't. So but that we could, there are other people out there that would have taken this job that maybe wouldn't have got this bonus. So you could have fired these people to replace them with equally capable professional people that are currently unemployed on Wall Street right this minute. If, if I, if you'll let me explain. Each of these contracts is a complicated contract unto itself. It's not you've seen one, you've seen them all. They're really all unique. And they need to be properly hedged and balanced at the end of each day because there's so much volatility in the market. I, I, I if they're not, that. you get burned. Let, then, let me ask you a question. In your, in your former life, with, you were with Allstate. Uh, I'm a policyholder of lots of... No, we, we honored... You had them. a difference of opinion on a legal contract. Yes. You went to court based on judgment yes. and let the courts decide. I'm a lawyer. I'm all for courts making decisions on legal matters, not necessarily lawyers for private companies. Our job, your job, is to make decisions on the basis of what you think is best. But at the same time, in this case, you have an obligation to the general public. I can't imagine why you couldn't have followed the same policy here. Simply say, let me, let me ask you one more question. I asked the previous panel, do you believe that the current course that AIG is on, that this course will lead to stability and profitability of AIG within a reasonable period of time? I do. Do you have any idea, year, two, five, ten, a hundred years? No, the, the, uh, the, the plan is about a two, two to three year period of plan, uh, two to two three, three year period. period of time. But it's very dependent upon what happens to market conditions around I respect the globe. That. Very dependent. I respect as, as we all are dependent on that. So why did you consider at all you didn't consider replacing these people because you thought the contracts were too complicated. I respect that. Did you consider all saying, look, we're not going to do this. We read it differently. We think the circumstances have changed. We think these contracts are null and void because the circumstances have changed. Uh, if you disagree with us, we'll see you in court knowing, or at least believing, that within two to three years, AIG will either be back to profitability or bankrupt and gone. Either way, by the time those lawsuits were settled, these people would be then in a court that either was a private company with no taxpayer dollars left or a company that was bankrupt with a bankruptcy judge to decide who got what money. Did that cross your mind at all? It crossed our mind, got very serious consideration. Serious consideration. Why didn't you do it? Uh, back to the risk assessment. Had we done that, more than likely those people would have walked out the door tomorrow or whenever, and we would have had this $1.6 trillion book of business which needs to be managed every day with no one to manage it. To the extent something happens in one of those trades and it triggers a cross default, w we get into a spiral that undoes all of what the government has, has so do done. So you have any us. plans of the people that haven't left yet? Do you have any plans of firing them now? Because they've proven to me that they don't have the best interest of their employer, namely the American taxpayer, at heart. Since that's the case, I understand you don't want to be without them. Uh, just, you don't have to tell me names. Anybody going to fire next week? or next month or three months from now and replace them quietly in a thoughtful manner? No, well, let me tell you what we've tried to do. We'd like those people, each one has a book of business. There are 22 or 24 separate books of business. Their job, either individually or in tandem, is to wind that book of business down. It could happen by the end of April. It could happen by the end of December. What we've also done is we've brought in some additional people to understand those books of business. It's hard to get all the right expertise at the right time to understand those books of business as backstops or insurance. All right, Mr. Lee, I think, I think you've made a series of judgments that I obviously disagree with, that you could have made other decisions and let the chips fall where they may. 
It, it amazes me that these are the only people, apparently you are the only good person left on Wall Street to do this because you know the American people need it. And I appreciate your effort, and I don't mean to berate you on a personal basis. I really do appreciate what you have done. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it would be nice if we had a couple of more people working for AIG at top-level salaries that uh, felt the same way or anywhere near the same way. And for those who don't, the truth is, as one taxpayer, I don't want them working for me. I just assume you get rid of them and take the risk with that. You know, sir, there, there are a number. There's a cadre of people working at AIG, very hard for the American taxpayer, trying to do everything we can to repay every single dollar. You, you would be proud of them. Uh, not right now, I'm not. Mm -hmm.